Oh, this looks like a fun game. I wanna play it. Well, that's not what I expected. Okay, I will do it myself. Let's create an empty Unreal Engine project. I quickly made a simple character and set up camera to behave like in a side-scroller type of games. You can move left or right, jump and freely move camera in two dimensions. The most crucial part of the game is all sorts of fluids. This whole project was actually inspired by a Niagara system and specifically its fluid simulation tools. Let me enable Niagara plugin from Epic Games and show you some of the templates. Water, fire, gas and smoke. Niagara can do it all. This looks very impressive out of box. With a bit of config, fluids can even collide with meshes. This plugin is still in beta and maybe it's not 100% accurate, but I can see how all of it can be used in some sort of cool puzzles and traps and all that. But if I really want to use it, I need to dive right in. After a couple of days, this thing is just huge. I made some sort of wrapper for Niagara water. It encapsulates Niagara particle system with easy access to all the parameters I'll need in my project. In the process of making this, I didn't always find a way to make it work like I want to, so there are a few workarounds I had to do. I made similar wrapper for Niagara smoke. I can use my API to configure it for my purposes. The next step will be to make some of the puzzle components, so I can design a bunch of cool puzzles with Niagara Flutes. Let's start from this sort of pins. In the ads, you usually need to pull a pin to save the good guy, kill the bad guy, you name it. I made similar pin in my project pattern 3D. I call it gate. They are ugly inside with a bunch of mud, but they do work pretty well in the game. It's a pretty customizable part, I can freely rotate and scale them. Gates work with any sort of Niagara fluids. I also decided to add bad guys to the game. They are not really smart. I made a simple algorithm so they move forward till they hit an obstacle and then turn around. In a combination with gates, it might lead to some interesting puzzles in future. It's not quite working yet, but if an enemy sees you, you will lose and probably will have to restart, so don't get caught. Another small addition is interactable buttons. I can use gates to press it and start an event, for example, to move another gate. Finally, I added what I call a spike trap. You better watch out and don't step on anything suspicious. The trap also works with enemies, which again may lead to some interesting puzzles. I then spent some time and designed several puzzles involving water and smoke. There are some limitations in terms of what information I could get from Niagara particle systems. For example, I can't really get information about collisions, or at least it is something I personally wasn't able to achieve. After I had all it done on paper, I started to implement them in Unreal Engine. The idea was to have a giant laboratory involved in some unethical experiments with dinosaurs. While making the environment, I as usual used a lot of 3D assets from Unreal's marketplace. I have the first floor done, so I can show you some of the rooms. This is the entrance where the game starts. You then proceed to the lab rooms with actual puzzles in it. First level will be all about water puzzles. I tried to incrementally raise the difficulty when you progress. I don't wanna spoil all the puzzles just yet, but I used all of the parts I made before. All sorts of gates, buttons, doors, enemies and of course Niagara systems. I proceeded to make a second level. It is supposed to be some sort of underground warehouse for the laboratory. I decided it will be all about smoke puzzles. To transition between levels, a player will need to use an elevator. Finally, I made the last, third level, a one giant puzzle involving everything player has learned in previous levels. The foundation for puzzles was done, so after a session of bug fixing, I started to add more details to the environment, fixing lightning, post-process effects and other stuff.
changed the model of the enemies to be more appropriate for that and made them actually mortal. I changed the player's model as well. I honestly just grabbed the first decent looking model from my library. And apparently the guy has spurs now. I was also thinking about straight up adding a dinosaur to his second level. He's like broke free from experiments and now wandering here, but I don't know, it looked so cursed I decided to leave it as is. After fixing a portion of new bugs, I was done with designing levels, but none of those puzzles actually work. You can literally ignore everything and move through. So I implemented an event system, which allows me to quickly script every single puzzle. I can simply drag and drop children of my event class and configure them so every puzzle is 100% functional. For example, I can tell which event should be preceded when players open a gate, a door, etc. It does look a bit messy, but now all of these puzzle parts actually do something. The game making you think you are interacting with slime or smoke, while it's not the case at all. I already mentioned that I can't get the information about collisions with fluid system, so I really tried to make a workaround and pretend like player interacting with fluids, while in reality it's all just clever use of timers, events and whatnot. It does look pretty believable though. But let's talk performance. And it is absolutely terrible. I'm getting probably close to like 20 FPS with RTX 3080. But do we really need all these smokes enabled at the same time? No, not at all. I can activate only one, maybe two particle systems simultaneously. The ones you can see on the screen at the same time. And when the player progresses through the level, I can deactivate old particles, which are not on the screen already, and activate new ones player can see at the moment. This did make the trick and boosted my performance quite a bit. It still doesn't have the best performance, but that's just because even two smoke emitters on the screen make my PC lag. Fluid calculation is very expensive and plugin is still in beta, so it is what it is. Next thing needed to be fixed is a restart feature. If you die or want to restart the puzzle for some reason, you are forced to close the whole game and open it again. I made a small restart button and now you can press it to reset your character, enemies, fluid systems and so on. If you fail, you can just try again. I also made and added a custom cursor. Looks pretty cool. If you remember, we still have scuffed enemies which do nothing if you've been caught. Well, not anymore. I made a special UI element and added some animations, so you can be caught correctly now and can also restart the puzzle. Enemies will only see you if they face you, can't see with their back. I also decided to completely get rid of camera management. It was a really cool feature to have for testing, but when playing I really do prefer static camera, which scrolls between puzzles. It also means that I can set up camera for each puzzle separately, so the player will see everything I want them to see. I finally finished the last level, adding a secret room at the end full of dinosaurs eggs. And one of the final details is to yank the whole lab. My lab now. And of course, I added sounds for all the things. Footsteps, jumps, doors, gates, transitions, and just a bunch of random noises. Slap the spooky music on top and I can finally play a puzzle game from misleading mobile game ads. I obviously already know how to solve the puzzles, but I will try to show you the thought process. If you really want to, you can even pause the video and try to solve them yourself before watching the solution. You probably have seen the first puzzle dozens of times already. Do not get close to the door, it will open. Instead, drain the slime first. The door is locked, so I need to get rid of the slime somehow. Now we're talking.
Okay, looks like I can't cheat the guards. Someone smart made them. If you will try to open the door on the second floor, that won't end well. So instead, let the guard take care of the slime. But don't be a dumb dumb after. This one is pretty easy. Just kill the guard who is the slime pipe and move on. Lesson learned, don't go into the rooms with the red light. There is a button and player has to figure out what to do. If you just press it using the gate, you will see that it triggers slime to fall down. But now you can't pass the guard. So why not try to trap the guard first? We are going to the second level. Okay, so smoke is dangerous, but if you block it, you will be fine. First three obstacles aren't actually hard, they ultimately just teach you that smoke will kill you. This is the tricky one though. There is a huge fan and you can make it blow, suck, or just be turned off. The solution here will be to trap the guard and kill it with a fan. Now you just need to safely move forward. Here you can't get around this broken pipe. But what you can do is to connect two pipes and redirect the smoke. Now you can't move forward though, so disconnect the pipes and move on. We have same pipes in this part. Intuitively, you wanna connect them, kill the guard and move forward. The thing is, there is a spike trap right after, and you need to can't jump over nor get around it. So what I expect player to do is actually don't kill him, and let him trigger the spike trap instead of you. And then get past the pipes to the last level. You can see a hole with slime, a special box holder and the gate covering the smoke. If you use the gate to make a safe path, the smoke will block the way. 
What you can do though, is to use a box to block the smoke. Okay, this is quite a big puzzle, but it's not that complicated. If you try to jump down, you will press one of the buttons and something will happen. Looks like you can't get into the elevator, so let's try to push the second button. Indeed, the bath is clear now. The only problem is that you can't get out. So, what if I try to press the second button with the pressure of falling slime? It did work, but let's stay in a safe place this time. In the last puddle, if I blow the smoke first, I can't really do anything with the guard. What if I use the fan beforehand to kill him? Okay, we also have a spike trap to deal with. Seems like we can kill the guard and block the spike trap. But wait a minute. How do I pass the smoke now? The gate is blocked, so I can't move it. What you should do is kill the guard, block the smoke, block the spike trap, and move forward. There's a final room with a bunch of suspiciously looking eggs. Oh, looks like I can interact with one of them. I mean, yeah, I know it's a stupid ending. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can download the game using the link in the description. I would love to make more videos like this, so let me know in the comments if you have any cool ideas. Here is my Twitter and Discord server. You can ask me any questions there. You will find source files of some of my projects here as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you next time.